Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are continuing our how to build a big block series. This is episode number nine. If you missed the previous eight, a link down below in the description with a big playlist here on YouTube to show you what you have missed so far. And there's some pretty good stuff in there, so I encourage you to check that out. And before we get started, I also want to say a big thank you to Summit Racing for shipping me out all these parts that I've used in this video today, amongst all this crazy virus scare and lockdown and all this and that. Summit Racing really came through in the clutch and got my parts to me very, very fast. No, I'm not sponsored. Uh, by Summit Racing. I wish I was, but I'm not. I just really like dealing with them. Uh, their customer service is top-notch and uh, they have a wonderful selection of quality automotive parts, which I completely recommend uh, for the engine that we're building today. Uh, all applicable links are down below in the description for everything I used today that might be a little specialty or specific parts. And I, before we go any further, it doesn't really apply to today's video, but I want to mention it. Our engine is bored uh, 30 over, just in case you were watching previous episodes and I didn't say that, our engine is bored uh, 30 over, so don't go thinking this is a stock bore. So today we're gonna be covering uh, painting the engine, putting the water pump on, and the fuel pump on. It's uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, you're gonna need a lot of masking tape, a proper engine enamel, a good water pump, and I recommend spending the extra money to get the aluminum one, and a uh, quality fuel pump, because if you, uh, cheap out on the fuel pump, you will regret it later. With all that out of the way, we can go ahead and dive in. Alrighty, now we are prepped for paint, and basically what you're gonna wanna do is cover the entire deck surface and lifter valley with tape or newspaper or something that's gonna keep paint out of those vital engine areas. Uh, it's pretty easy and straightforward, and then you can just run a razor blade along the edges. You wanna create a nice sharp edge, um, so it looks nice and neat. On the front, I've just put some paper towels into the uh, water jacket inlets and some, I call them tape torpedoes, on uh, the threads for the water pump. Uh, that might be a little excessive. You probably don't need to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And you might be wondering why this area of the harmonic balancer is um, taped off, because I put a nice white stripe there and I want to keep that white. And if a little bit of overspray goes on this uh, timing cover and harmonic balancer, it's okay because they are also sprayed in the same exact engine and I'm gonna be spraying, spraying the rest of the engine. So basically you wanna cover all the areas that are a nice machine surface uh, that has to be, you know, with the heads or the intake manifold. Uh, you wanna make sure that there's pretty much no way paint's gonna get into the engine because that'd be bad. Um, and we're gonna paint this gray area. I think this is uh, some sort of engine primer, I'm not really sure. You might notice on the back that this is a little uh, exposed here, and that's okay. I'm actually gonna paint uh, this back area because the transmission's gonna be bolting up to it like this. Um, so I don't really care if uh, this back piece gets a little ugly. If you really wanted to, you could put this on an engine crane and spray it that way. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, and you certainly don't have to, and heck, you might not even want to paint your engine, but I'm going to, and I think it'll look very, very snazzy when it's done. Moving on to the side of the engine, uh, basically what I did for prep is I cut out these foams I just kind of had laying around the shop. I mean, any kind of material you can kind of form in there to keep the brass look uh, is what I was going for. Now, if you don't really care that these will be painted. You don't have to do this. You can just paint them the same color as the engine. I've seen plenty of guys do that, but I really like the black on brass aesthetic, and uh, I'm gonna keep going in that route. While we're looking over the main surface, I'm gonna be painting pretty much. I wanna mention that uh, what you need to do is go around the entire surface that you're painting and clean it off with um, carburetor spray just to make sure that you're not getting any oil. We've been oiling the heck out of this thing, and uh, we wanna make sure that the engine enamel sticks to uh, just the metal or the primer that's on there. I mean, even this primer is kinda of coming off and showing that it was painted orange earlier. We're gonna be going black. And speaking of engine primer, I can't recommend using a quality engine enamel. Uh, I like this stuff by VHT, and I have black, and it can withstand temperatures up to 550 degrees. Our engine's probably never gonna get that hot, so. Uh, this is the good stuff. I've left a link down below in the description. I've used it on a bunch of uh, different engine applications and it's always worked really well for me. And then for this last part, uh, again, I have foamed up the freeze plugs and I've also taped off where the oil filter adapter is gonna sit in. Again, we don't want uh, any kind of engine oil in there. And then I've left this machine surface open because uh, this is basically how it's gonna look and I don't want this to be bare metal. I want this to be black, but I have put a very fine edge of tape 
uh, on my Moroso pan because I want my pan to stay that nice uh, silvery color and uh, if you have a pan like a stock pan and you want to paint it also I would definitely use engine enamel for that so maybe you don't even have to tape that off so uh, with all that out of the way, I'm going to clean this whole thing again, all the exposed areas with carburetor spray to make sure we don't have any oil on there, and then we are ready to shoot with some engine enamel. So here's what our drying product looks like, and uh, it turned out pretty solid, I have to say. Uh, don't be afraid to go a little thicker than you normally would with regular spray paint. Engine enamel's pretty forgiving. Uh, I do recommend a respirator or something. It's uh, pretty caustic to breathe. So on something like this. Now what we're gonna do is let it dry for the entire time it says on the can. I mean, I'm not even gonna wait until it's tacky uh, to remove this. I'm gonna wait the full time to make sure that we get perfect coverage. Alrighty, so it's been about three hours or so since I sprayed it, and I, what I did was I put a light coat on and then a, a much heavier second coat as per the instructions on the can. So now we can remove our tape and you want to be as careful as possible. So when you're removing it, don't go like this with it because then you're going to end up uh, maybe taking paint with you, which is uh, never good. So what you want to do is be careful with it and peel away, see I'm pulling this way, away from the painted surface like this and pulling up at an edge so it leaves the paint with it. You might have noticed over here on the deck surface, uh, looks like my taping job really wasn't good enough. So what I'm gonna do is just take a razor blade and scrape all that off, because I want it to be this nice machine surface there. So uh, if you have a little bit of overspray like that, it's okay. Uh, you can just take a razor blade and get rid of all that. Even the front of it turned out amazing, which is super, super cool. So, and I'm gonna keep the heads aluminum, just in case you're wondering. I'm gonna keep the heads aluminum and spray just to clear on them. That way you kind of have a aluminum-ish colored pan, and then you have aluminum heads and uh, an aluminum intake, and it, I don't know, just looks really nice uh, to have just the two types of looking metal. Um, you'll see it'll turn out really really sharp. So the next thing we're gonna worry about is putting in our oil filter adapter. What this does is sits down in this oil filter hole and uh, takes up space so you can put a normal spin-on type uh, oil filter. Because these are primarily truck engines, uh, usually they have like a, a cooler fitting right here and it has two oil cooler lines, lines and that runs uh, kind of to the front and you have like an additional oil cooling radiator that's really unnecessary uh, for our application. So we're gonna be putting this adapter in. I got this from Summit Racing, link down below in the description. And our gasket here actually came in our Felpro gasket kit and it fits perfectly in there. No need to use silicone rubber or anything like that. We can just go ahead and put the gasket in just like that. Put our adapter in and then put our bolts in. Now the bolts that came with mine are half inch and they're actually made by ARP, so that's pretty cool. Go ahead and snug those up. Now they're just little 3 8 bolts, so don't go like crazy, crazy tight. Just, you know, wrist tight's probably good. And there we go, nice and installed.
All right, while the engine is uh, flipped over on its head for right now, what we can worry about is putting our fuel pump in. And to do that, we're gonna have to remove this uh, plug here. And that is a 5 16 Allen. We gotta go ahead and remove this plug. Oh, it's ruining my nice paint. Oh well. There we go, that plug removed. We can uh, see down in there. Make sure there's no obstruction or anything like that. So the next thing I want to talk about is our fuel pump push rod. This actually rides inside the engine and pushes down on the uh, fuel pump arm. And it's really important that this isn't any shorter than it was when it left the factory. And who knows how many miles are on this fuel pump push rod and who knows how long it is because if this is like, let's say a quarter inch too short or something, uh, you'll have insanely low fuel pressure or it'll just lay over at the top end and cause all kinds of problems. So what we're gonna do is uh, zero out our calipers on zero, very good. Now I happen to know that the proper fuel pump push rod length is 5.75 inches. So we can go ahead and measure that using our dial calipers here. And we can see that it measures a teensy bit over 575, but this is perfect. We're gonna put this right back in. Now, if yours measures less than that, just go ahead and buy a new one. Don't even mess with it. They're very inexpensive, and this is not the time or place in the engine to cheap out. All right, make sure that your uh, fuel pump push rod is really clean. I just cleaned this bad boy with some carburetor spray. So it is pretty darn clean. And the next thing we're gonna do is grab some assembly lube. I have some of this uh, cleavite stuff left over, and we're gonna bathe it our uh, fuel pump push rod in it. Just get it nice and lubed up for this application because the, the tight, the fit is pretty darn tight and we want to make sure this thing has plenty of lubrication to do its job. There we go, that looks pretty good. A little more, why not? Because obviously if it doesn't have good lubrication, especially on the ends, uh, those metal surfaces can eat each themselves alive and we really don't want that. So make sure this is nice and assembly lubed up and then we can just slide her into place. Like that, might need to get a little screwdriver and push it uh, a little further in. We can grab a blunt long implement here and push that all the way down into its home. Uh, you don't want to create a divot or anything, so don't use like a uh, pointy Phillips head or something. Uh, it's better to use a blunt instrument. Next, we're gonna replace our plug for our push rod there, because if you put the fuel pump on first without replacing this, uh, there's really no way to get to it. I mean, maybe if you had like a really, really short Allen, but I don't have that luxury, so put it on now. So here is the fuel pump we're gonna be using for today. It's a Summit Racing high volume, 110 gallon per hour, uh, big block Chevy fuel pump. Summit Racing parts I've always found are pretty darn good, especially for the money. I really uh, enjoy using their stuff. And uh, the only thing you really need to pay attention to is which side is out and which side is in uh, for when you're plumbing the fuel later on. Um, this clock is perfect for me though, it's gonna work great. And uh, we can see that it came with a gasket. Now that gasket, we're gonna use some uh, spray adhesive and actually physically adhesive it to our fuel pump so it can't move on us while we're trying to install it. So let's go ahead and tackle that. So I've got my uh, fuel pump very gently held in this vise. What we're gonna do is take our spray adhesive, figure out which way we want it. That looks pretty good. Give her a nice coat. There we go. Touch that to our surfaces. Bring it up, put it back down. And we're just gonna let that sit and hang out and dry for a little bit. There we go, it's pretty much dry already. And now we can move on back to the engine. Next thing we're gonna do is grab a little carburetor spray on a paper towel. And give this surface here a nice cleaning. And then we're gonna grab some RTV, some of the same stuff we've been using this entire time. And we're going to apply a little, oh, that's wrong. We're going to apply a little bit to this outside ring here, this outside brim. You just want a nice skin of the stuff on there to prevent any kind of leakage. You don't need to go crazy with it, just, you know, a decent skin. It's kind of hard to see because it's black on black, but uh, that's what it should look like. What I'm going to do next is on the arm for the fuel pump, 
I'm gonna go ahead and put just a dab of that assembly lube on the contact surface just to make sure those surfaces don't eat each other. Why not? Now we can replace our fuel pump. It might fight you a little bit just because actuating that arm to swing this thing fully into place so the threads can grab can be a little tricky. I want to tighten these as evenly as possible as well. And there we go. All right. Next thing we can do is put some carbon strainer paper towel and lightly clean around the water, water ports for the water pump. Just make sure there's no, uh, you know, grease or debris around this area. Looks pretty good. Now we can move over to the water pump. So here's our replacement water pump. It is the long style big block pump. It's all aluminum from Summit Racing. It is a fantastic product. Uh, the only thing I want to do uh, upon uh, receiving it is make sure, making sure that these bolts are all tight and across pattern and uh, don't go over tight with them Just make sure they're not loose. You know, it's not going up a little bit probably good And then we need to clean off this these uh, port surfaces and using a paper towel and some carburetor spray See how dirty it was all right Now we can worry about putting our gaskets on those surfaces clean. We can grab our old friend spray adhesive here and give a nice coating to one side of our gasket and apply that. There we go, it looks pretty good. Lift it back up, place it back down. Make sure all the holes are nice and aligned, just like that. Let her dry, that looks perfect. Now we can do the same thing for the other side. Do a nice liberal coat of spray adhesive there. And affix it to the other side, making sure the bolt holes all line up. Lift it up, place it back. That spray adhesive is good stuff. Making sure everything's nice and aligned and laid down nice and flat, just like that. And we're all done over here. All right, now we can grab some uh, RTV, apply it to our fingertip, and just go around the water port openings for both sides. You just want a nice skin on there just to make sure we don't leak any water. There we go, there's one side. There we go. Nice skin on both uh, ports there. All right, now we can put our water pump on here. And the nice thing about aluminum is it's quite a bit lighter than the cast iron stuff. And the bolts I'm using are ARP bolts. I've left a link down below in the description to them because um, this water pump doesn't actually come with them. And the water pump only goes on one way. Uh, it's actually impossible to put it on upside down. Um, at least this one is. So uh, easy way is just these two heater ports go up. It's pretty easy. So once you get two in, we can put the other two in. So the bolt kit I uh, linked actually has five bolts in it and one of them is longer than all the rest. Uh, we're not using that today. We're just gonna use all four of the shorties. Just use the four equal length ones. Tighten those up in an even manner and uh, do as much cross patterning as you can. Let me go ahead and torque these bad boys down to 30 foot pounds. And there we go. Thank you so very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, there is more Big Block content coming, uh, and as well as more updates on my project car, my 1967 Camaro, which this engine's actually going into and why I'm building it and doing a whole series here on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.